We're born lost. I don't care what, how good of a home you were born into, how good of a family you were born into, you are born lost in need of a Savior. And tonight you need Christ. We find here a picture of a young man. The Bible tells us he went to his father. Listen to this. He went to his father and he said, Father, I want my inheritance. Now would you look here for a moment? I'm not the cleverest chap in the world. But I do know that you don't really get your inheritance until when? Until the daddy dies. He went to his father and he basically said, Daddy, I don't really care if you're dead or alive. I just want your money. Now can I tell you that most of humanity thinks that way about God? Most people in the world today don't really care about God. They just want what God can give them. They don't really care about knowing God or loving God. They just want blessings from God. They want good health. They want good money. They want their, their life to be comfortable, their family to be well, no problems. They want peace, but they don't want God. I wonder tonight if that's you. I wonder, look here, I wonder if that's you. You don't really care to know God. You don't really care about Jesus. You just want your life to be fine. Can I tell you, you're just as ungrateful as this young man. You might as well walk up to God, look him in the face and say, I don't really care if you're dead or alive. I just want what you can give me. That's a bad way to be, my friend. The Bible says the father gave him his, his lot, his portion. Can you imagine the father going down to the bank and saying to the, to the lady or the man, they didn't have banks in, but can you imagine, bear with me, saying to the folk, give me, give me some money, I need to give it to my son. What a shameful thing. The Bible says that young man took all that he had, all that his father had given him. And the scriptures say not many days later, he headed for the far country. Now, I don't know where the far country was, but I do know this. Anywhere outside of the father's house is the far country. And tonight you could be sat in this gospel tent and your heart still be a million miles away from God. You could be in the far country tonight. You can look good and even carry a Bible under your hand and sing all the songs, but your heart be a million miles away from Jesus. I wonder if that's you tonight. Maybe that's you. Maybe you've learned the language. You've learned how to talk about God. You've learned how to say praise the Lord. You've learned how to, how to shake hands and call somebody brother and sister. But you are a thousand million miles away from your Savior. You don't feel anything any longer. You don't really want to open the Bible and pray. You're like this young man. You have headed to a far country. Bible says when he got to the far country, he wasted his inheritance. And he, when he spent all the famine came. Can I tell you something tonight, friends? Every one of us in this tent tonight, we are, we are spending our lives. We are spending what God gave us. You're spending your breath every single day. You're spending it one day at a time. And what you do with your life, you will either waste it or you will invest it. You'll either waste your life and can I tell you, if you're only living for yourself, you're wasting it. You're wasting it every single day, one day at a time. If, you're not, if you've never given your life to Christ, and you're not giving your life to Christ, then you are wasting it. And the tragic thing is, look here, the tragic thing is, most people are wasting what God has given them, and they don't even know it. Every time you get up in the morning and you go to work and you do what you got to do, but you never think about God, you never give thanks to God, you never praise God. Every time you live your life like God doesn't exist, you've wasted another day. And one day I'll have to stand before God and answer for every day I've lived and every time I've wasted it. Every opportunity wasted and every day wasted. Some of you tonight, you know you've lived many years. Some of you lived more years than I've been alive and you, you've wasted most of those. And here's a young man who went to the far country and he wasted everything his father gave him. And the scripture said something interesting, that when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine. Maybe tonight some of you know a prodigal. Can I ask you, look here for a second, how many of you know a prodigal? If somebody's away from God, would you raise your hand? There might be somebody in this tent who's away from God. Maybe you're married to a prodigal. Maybe you're married to somebody who's far away from God. Maybe your children are away from God. And the best thing you can do for a prodigal is pray. Pray. How do I pray? Well, 
maybe you, maybe you ought to pray a famine would come. Do you know sometimes it takes a bad thing before somebody turns? God forbid, we, we don't want to pray that something bad happens, but sometimes you've got to be brought very low before somebody opens their eyes. Sometimes you've got to be brought to the very bottom of it, rock bottom of it all. You've got to be broken before you look up to heaven and say, God, please forgive me. And a famine came. Everything dried up. All his money ran out. All the fun stopped. Can I just say for a moment, you might be having a grand old time in this life. You might be enjoying your life one day at a time. But I'm telling you, a famine is coming. A famine is coming. Your money will dry up. The fun, it'll no longer be fun anymore. The, how, however much you've got to drink now to enjoy yourself, you'll have to drink more because it dries up. If you find pleasure in this, this motor, that vehicle, believe me, after a few weeks, you'll need another one. It's never enough. Buy a nicer trailer, buy a nicer chalet, whatever you want to do. But it'll never be enough because this world cannot satisfy your soul. The Bible said this man went to the far country. He spent everything and he began to be in need. He was in want. And here's what he did. He became a slave. The Bible says he joined himself to a citizen of that far country. He began to serve somebody in that far country. And he got so low, he began to feed pigs. Now Jews don't mess with pigs. Jewish people don't, they don't eat a bacon bap like we had for breakfast. They don't like the sausage. They don't touch pigs. And here is a Jewish boy living with the pigs and eating with the pigs. Would you look here for a moment? That's exactly what you look like when you're living in the world. That's exactly, especially those of you who know Christ, that you've tasted that he's good, if you've called upon his name and you've gone back to the world, you are, you are amongst pigs, swine. The Bible says he was so hungry, he began to look at what the pigs were eating, that he wanted to eat what they were eating. But the trouble is that pigs ate what humans can't eat. They used to eat the shell, the husk. The Bible says he would, he would have filled his belly with the husks that the swine to eat. There was a shell of a certain tree called a carob tree. You couldn't eat it. It's like eating sunflower seed shells. You could eat it, but it wouldn't do you any good. Can I tell you something? You can eat what this world has to offer you, but it will not do your soul any good. You can go out and party and enjoy what the world has to offer, but it will leave you empty. It will leave you broken and in a state of despair. And I don't know why you keep going after it over and over and over again. You keep doing the same thing again and again. And you wake up the next morning empty. Your soul empty. The Bible says that's the state of this man. And I believe tonight that might be the state of some of you. You're empty inside. You know it. You've gone from one thing to the next trying to find satisfaction. Would you look here for a moment? Nothing can bring you satisfaction but Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing can fill the longing inside except Christ Jesus. Some of us have experienced it. We know we've tried everything and it doesn't work. You were made to know God. You were created to walk with God and there's only one way. It's not through a man or through a church. It's through Jesus. There's only one way to know God and it is through Christ Jesus the Lord. If anybody comes to you and says, well, if you ever want to get to God, you've got to come to my church. Run. Run to the hills because you need Jesus. Not a man with a collar or not a man with a tie, but you need the Savior. You need a man with holes in his hands and holes in his feet and a hole in his side because he bled and died for your soul. That's who you need. He's the only one that can give you forgiveness of sins. The only one that can bring you out of the pit of despair and give you joy. He's the only one that can change you. You need a new life. You don't, just don't need a new start. You need a new life. You don't just need to be picked up. And You need a new life. That's what Jesus meant when he said, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Some people think that born again is a religion. No, 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 no. Born again is a state of being. You become a new man, a new woman. You're a new creature. That's what it means. I, my wife and I have six children. I thank God for it. Number seven is on the way. And every time a child is born in our home, we know, every time a new life comes into the home, we know somebody new is there. And can I tell you, when somebody is born again, you won't have to guess. When somebody is born again by the precious blood of Jesus, by the Spirit of the living God, you won't have to guess if somebody's new. they change. They may look the same and dress the same, but I'm telling you, they are changed. 
The Bible says this man, when he hit rock bottom, he was at the very bottom of the bottoms, and the scriptures say he came to himself. You know what that means? He woke up. Some of you tonight need to wake up. Some of you this evening, I'm telling you, I'm going to warn you now, some of you in the, in the next few moments, you're going to think in your head, I'm going to leave this. i got to get out of here. Don't go. Do not leave. God is dealing with you. Do not run from Jesus Christ. Do not run from the only message that can save your soul. The Bible said he came to himself. He woke up. He began to think to himself for a moment. Hold on a moment here. I'm dying, and my father has servants who have more than enough to eat. I wish some, I wish some of you tonight would think for a second. I wish you'd stop and think and realize that your soul is shriveling up. You are starving inside. You are dying. You are dead in your sins right now. I wish you'd stop and think and realize that your Father in Heaven actually has a bunch of servants who have more than enough to eat. Some of them are right here tonight. We've got more than I don't. I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about the thing that really matters, to fit the peace and joy inside that none can take away. Do you need that tonight? And the Bible says he, he thought, you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm going, to go, I'm going to go to my father's house and I'm going to say to him, look, I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy to be called your son, so make me a servant. And then the Bible says he got up. Would you look here? He did what most people don't do. He thought about it and then he did it. There's so many people who sit in a meeting like this and they think to themselves, I know I need to be saved. I know I need to give my life to Jesus. I know I need to be born again, but not today. I know I need to get up and go to Jesus, but 